Time for Mr. Truck, reviewing the latest innovations for your truck and trailer. Well, hey, this is Kim with MrTruck.com. And this week's review is a 2019 Ram Limited 2500 Heavy Duty Crew Cab Short Bed with the standard Cummins engine. So that's 370 horsepower and 850 pound-feet of torque. Then six-speed automatic, four-wheel drive course, limited, it's pretty well loaded. And we're taking it up to the mountains. And <laughs> I know there's snow on the ground here. And do some of our video with the Gen Y hitch. We've got the cushion coupler on the back. We're testing with this trailer. So come see us pull this iron ball from Jayhawk Trailers gooseneck flatbed with my 1994 second generation Dodge Ram lift kitted rock crawler on the back. See how we do up in the Rockies. Oh, in the snow. Of course, what's cool about this truck now, and there in the front, that is the button that you push and then you use your directional buttons to steer your spotter mirror. Cool or what? That is your spotter mirror moving all over. Gotta love that. Yeah. And all you do is push the front button and then you go with left to right and then you have your directional buttons. That is just so cool. I love that. Because I do change that a lot. Going around corners or backing up so I can see where my trotter tires are when I'm jackknifed and that really helps. Since we're in the ice and snow, my deployable rear step was a little bit frozen but it actually came back. Oh, look at that pounce right in there. That's cool. You need all the help you can to get back up and work on these goosenecks or hook up the goosenecks and your electrical pigtail. So having that extra little step on the rear end Good idea, and this limited happens to have one of those. Let's see if I can kick it back out. Get on the edge. Oh, look at that. Well, there's a brake controller. <clears throat> and then we go over alternate height for the trailer. So this has air ride, exhaust brake. Tow haul mode, parking, and parking off the front. So you got the front and rear parking buzzers. Beautiful screen. Some more outlets along with what's down below. This is obviously has a CD player. Look at all those USB ports. Just got it loaded using these heavy duty ramps on this Iron Bolt trailer. Got this trailer from Jayhawk Trailers in Denver. This has 7,000 pound axle, so it's a 14,000 GBW. We're just a hair over 10,000 pounds. But the air ride on this Ram 2019 Limited 2500 is doing its job, it's leveling out. I'll lower it an inch when I get on the road. And there it is, Dodzella, my rock crawler. The second generation, 94. Lifted, half ton. Four inch lift, three inch body lift. This is for sale. You can buy this on MrTruck.com. This is our weight to test out the Limited. Ram Limited. These ramps are all self-contained. They go in this slot and you pin it up. They are heavy duty and it fits in that little ridge on the end of the trailer. This is a 24 by 8.5 foot trailer. Mr. Truck here with another trailer review, a trailer accessory review. Of course, it's Gen Y Hitch, the powerful shock absorbing torsion coupler. And this one is the Pegasus. It's sold a lot for horse trailers. A lot of it's because there's a four inch gap here that allows the whole hitch to go up higher into the trailer for these tall trucks. And that seems to be all there is, is tall trucks. So that helps. But this is really a cool cushion coupler. Gets rid of that, that 
bump between the truck and the trailer. It isolates the truck and the trailer. So the truck doesn't feel the trailer, the trailer doesn't feel the truck, which is what you want in a cushion. Especially as rough as the roads are in the U.S. today. <laughs> this is exciting. Climbing the mountains in a snowstorm. So hopefully one of these cameras, outside cameras, will work while we're climbing to a haul mode, exhaust brake on, and we're pulling gooseneck trailer, got from Jayhawk Traders, it's an iron bowl, 24 foot, and we've got my Dodzilla overkill on there, so our load is 10,300 pounds, and we're pulling with this Cummins, I'm so glad I got an exhaust brake, because it is snowing, snowstorms are hard to avoid actually. Because in the winter, it could be a snowstorm any day. You don't know. This could be a bad one, but we're going up here on our way to Central City. Pick this road because it's got 7 and 8% grades, which I like, and it's four lanes. And we're trying to test this truck out. Now, this is the uh, standard Cummins and the standard six speed. So. We are running at 370 horsepower and 480 foot-pounds of torque. This is doing really well. We've already come up by 70 through all the mountain, some of the mountain passes. And they may have chain laws going into effect and our special snow tires. We've got four-wheel drive, so I think we're going to pass the inspections. But uh, hopefully the outside camera will pick up past the snow what the mountains look like up here. But I like this road because it it's a very steep road. Really good test for a truck. And I don't know if I can do a stand-up intro or not. We'll see if it's snowing when I get to Central City. But uh, yeah, Boulder County's got big, big, uh, what do you call it? Uh, warnings, snowstorm warnings. So we're not gonna mess around. I got to go to the casino and get my big prime rib, my cheap prime rib up here, but I may not bother this trip. I may just try to get home before the snow gets deep. But uh, yeah, I got Dodgezella on here. That's my 94 second generation Ram. It's got four inch lift, three inch body lift, 33 inch mud tires. And I'm selling the truck. We're moving about 100, about 70 miles east of where I'm at now. Moving with my son, so we'll have a few more acres out there. And some lakes to play in. And a little more room for all the trucks and trailers I get. But it's been snowing a little up here. I may end up getting four wheel drive coming out of here. But we'll find out. We're gonna have to wait to give us some traction. And this has got the air suspension, so it's leveled me out really well. So I had to wait for the snow to melt off the trailer before I loaded it, and that was good. So it was nice and dry today. Scoop some snow and let the sun dry the rest. But I love the exhaust brake on this. I've got it on a full exhaust brake. You can put it in the automatic, which sometimes will help hold your speed. But the, I like a full exhaust brake. Um, and it's doing well. I've seen quite a few cars on the side of the road with... Uh, Smoking engines today, so I guess t today people are having a hard time with their trucks. This is Thanksgiving week, so lots of traffic, but we're doing well. Truck is handling well. Exhaust brake is doing exactly what I want to. Grade shifting is all working. You can hear it pick up the RPMs there where I'm shifting down, climbing the hill. But uh, I think you can get up to maybe 60 miles an hour on this road. I probably won't go over 50. Seeing what the conditions are. And it's amazing, at 2 o'clock it got really dark with all the heavy clouds. The traffic was pretty crazy. That's where you really, if you're going to haul big loads, and you know, we're 10,300, it's not a super big load, but it just makes you feel so much better having an exhaust brake, so you don't have to use your brakes up. But yeah, the snow is sticking to the road now, so I probably will just turn around down here. But... Quite a journey. This is as early as I can get out here after you know, haul the chains and all the binders out and load the vehicle. This has some big, heavy duty ramps on it. So I'm going to need a nap. <laughs> 
And I like these towing mirrors. They're very good. And they got the most reach of any of the trucks. And the spotter mirror for this year, for this is a 2019. It's like the last press vehicle I'll get for 19. But I also have Gen Y hitch on there I wanted to test out and see if I can get any pictures of that bouncing at all coming back down the hill. But uh, yeah, this is an interesting run. Snow starting to stick to the road. So nobody's gonna be driving fast in these kind of grades. We may end up in four-wheel drive. But it's so hard to find a day when there's not gonna be a snow or a rain. And this time of the year, it just happens. So you gotta kinda work around as best you can. This is supposed to be the best day I can get basically this week. But the outside camera's probably not gonna show you a whole lot other than snow. This guy in front of me is being a little too cautious. Same by being loaded is you've got traction from the trailer. And you know, I probably have a little more than a thousand, maybe fifteen hundred pounds of ton weight. I loaded the trailer a little forward of the axles. And that's the thing about a dive with these rams is with the air bags on them, the air suspension, you don't know if you've got a lot of tongue weight because it keeps leveling itself out, which is a good thing. And it gives you better brakes on the truck and the trailer if you can stay level. It's better on your bearings, you know, you have the weight distributed between all your axles. But I don't think I'm gonna stay for prime rib this time. I think I gotta get home, get to a truck stop and get a chicken fried steak or something. Of course my doctor wouldn't let me need that. But you hear the rumble of his diesel, it always sounds cool, and exhaust brake sounds cool when it's kicking in. That was my goal to get up here before the snow, and it's like six o'clock, I think, is when this big part's supposed to hit. It's 3 o'clock now, which gives me about an hour and a half of daylight. Of course, when it hit the clouds are this dense, it's pretty dark out, actually. The road's really not slick. So if you hear what the temperature, it looks like it's 24 degrees. So it can be freezing. This is asphalt. It doesn't freeze as soon as cement does. I hear the power. And it coming up here on I-70, no problem at all accelerating. This load this is a small load for this. I think the maximum load you can put on this is 15,210. Payload's right around almost 2,000. It's 1953 on the payload. Yes, indeed. If you live in the mountains, you get used to these storms. You know how to drive in them. Of course, a lot of the people who live up here drive a little too fast for my taste, but they're used to it. To me, I'm on the cautious side because it's not my truck, it's not my trailer. But it is my Dodgezilla Overkill back there. That's my rock climber. Put bed liner on so I wouldn't get scratched by all the trees in the mountains. It makes a good payload. Let's see, we're getting close to town now. So I have a two-wheel drive. I don't want to be here in about two hours because things are going to be a lot worse about sundown. I really like this Iron Bolt trailer. It's a 24-footer, 8.5 feet wide. It's very well made. I don't even like the, the latches they have on the toolbox. The ramps are pretty heavy. They're long ramps, too. I had no problem climbing up the ramps. That's another thing you gotta watch in the winter time. If you got a steel deck, you really got problems. You can slide right off a trailer. So I usually get wood. This place is not known for having parking spaces. This is gonna be interesting. So I can drop into this parking lot and come out on the other side. I do love these mirrors. That spotter mirror, because that's your lifeline. Let's 
see if I can get through this mess. Comments. It's going what in the world? Well, now on this 2019 Ram 2500 Limited four wheel drive crew cab. Fancy, fancy. Anyway, got to do the trader and ability to function. You get 100 points. That's 20 for each of the five. Trailering control. Well, that's, you know, that's an easy one. That's 20 points. I mean, it's air ride. So you always are level. You don't have to worry about the trailer being down or up. If you level it out when you when you hook up, you're going to stay right there with those airbags, which is really good on here. So that's 20. Truck handling and squat. Of course, it can't squat with the airbags. So you don't have to worry about adjusting your height loaded to empty like you do on all the other trucks out there. So, of course, it's going to get 20 for the truck handling and lack of squat. Reaching the controls. The factory brake is right perfect on your right side where I love it. You can reach all the knobs very easily, both sides. So, you know, there's nothing at all wrong with reaching the controls and the factory brake. It works well. Uh, this one here has not had a problem. It's You've got uh, light and heavy electric. Electric or hydraulic, I didn't get it to that point. I didn't need it. So I don't think there's anything wrong with reaching the controls or the factory trailer brake in here. There's another 20. The mirrors are really good. The door is actually cut down quite a bit all the way across. Your visibility is really good out of this truck. The front, the back, and these mirrors have the longest reach of any mirror out there. There's a factory towing mirror. And the fact that it's got power convex mirror. The spotter mirror is under power. So 20 there. An acceleration with the trailer, even though this is not the high output diesel, it's the other Cummins, the standard Cummins. Had no problem accelerating, so I can't really fault it. So by golly, this truck here, first one in a long time, but I can give it a hundred because it's perfect. I know Kelsey would agree because she's a Ram fan, but uh, she actually is pretty objective about this. So that's where that comes in. We got a hundred for the trailering function and ability, which is very good. 32 gallon tank, that's like the smallest of the big three. And if you're pulling big trailers, you need all the fuel you can get. You definitely want to put an extra one on this one. And this is 373 axle ratio. Yeah, 410 comes on the 3500s. And this, I like this axle ratio. You know, I'm not a big fan of the 410s, but now they're kind of Get me only a few specific trucks will have that. So too, I've been looking for my four-wheel drive switches to make sure I can grab them. There it is. It's a button. So now we're climbing back out of Central City. Back up to I-70. Can't believe how dark it is still in the middle, well not middle of the day, but it's early in the day. Yeah, this is the day you really appreciate an exhaust break, I'll tell you. So here's a 7%, we'll hit the 8% in a little bit, but I'm coming down at 7%, running about 20, 200 RPMs. Everything's working, grade shifting is working, exhaust brake is working. Just letting all that stuff work, no, my foot is off the gas pedal. Control going around these curves. It's got decent tires on them. This has 10,000 gross vehicle weight rating on the truck, and with 10,300 pounds on the back, 
and I'm, I'm nowhere near 10,000, but I'm, you know, I'm under 24,000 and 26,001 is where the CDL and the, all the commercial stuff kicks in. So I'm all legal on weights. I did fill out my inspection. I don't have to since I'm 70 miles from my office. You have 150 miles where you don't have to do a log sheet. You're supposed to keep a log sheet in your office, though. But I do do an inspection sheet. I inspected the trailer and the truck and went through the whole list. I'm trying to be as legal as possible. I've got my, well, there's a little slick spot. Back in, dug out a little bit. But you're supposed to have fire extinguishers, which I have. You're supposed to have the triangles, which I have. You're supposed to have the fuses, which I have. They also want you to have a headlight bulb. Well, I really can't buy a headlight bulb for all these trucks I get every week. That would cost a fortune. Now, if it's your own truck and you're driving it all the time, I understand it. I would do that. But when I'm getting, you know, a media vehicle, basically every week, sometimes two a week, sometimes once a month, depends on what time of year it is, but I can't buy light bulbs for all these trucks. But anyway, I've driven in a lot of blizzards, a lot of snowstorms, it's always spooky. Spooky wooky. But you gotta be really alert. I'm watching out for the deer to run across on these mountain roads. I'm watching out for the slick spots. Coming down to an 8% grade here. Yep, there's the 8% sign. That's what's so challenging about this road is you got an 8% down and then a curve and then a hairpin curve. This is the part of the road where it gets exciting. You can hear that exhaust brake and you can hear the uh, grade shifting on this. Sounds cool. Sounds like a real truck. Make sure that this little switchback is not too icy. And my chains are staying nice and tight. I've got four chains on this truck. Four turnbuckles. So nothing's moving around on the trailer, which is really good. You certainly don't want a loose load on a loose road. 318s, my God. Quite an hour of daylight. And two, in these conditions, I usually don't run the radio. Of course, I'm talking to you guys. Can't run the radio anyway, but you don't want a distraction. You want to be able to hear every noise. You want to hear your RPMs and watch your RPMs. That also, besides the truck, you know, you can feel it move, but also your RPMs tell you if you're slipping. It's getting too slick. It's 25 degrees actually. It's starting to warm up right here. But you gotta watch all that stuff so you have control when the weather's bad. Engine's getting all the way up to 2500 RPM holding me back. It doesn't seem like a lot of RPMs, but it is on a diesel. Of course, these pickup truck diesels, they get up to 4000 RPM. Be fueling while they're doing that, but they do get up there and you're slowing down. Another 8% drop. Yeah, it grade shifted twice in a row there. I had the camera off, but it knocked her down. And it's 8% grade. It's doing really well. <clears throat> Holding the right speed. Narrowed up shifted after we leveled out. Yep, back on I 70. It's wet, it's not really slick. But yeah, I set this trailer up right before I took off on this trip. We loaded it on dry when it was dry. And this is a new trailer, so it just came from the factory. And they had the air pressure at 60 pounds, so road better coming up from Texas. But, of course, I need to set it at 80, which I did. So I don't want to have any man-made accidents. 
sitting here fighting nature like this. But got the chains nice and tight, got air pressure, checked everything out. But yeah, and the brakes, I've got them set clear up to nine on the game because that's part of the problem on a new trailer. Your brakes aren't burnished in. On drum brakes, they need to be burnished in. Let's see if I can sneak over here. But the uh, uh, so on a brand new trailer, your brakes are not as good to burnish them. So you know we burnish them on the road, door stop and starting. But you always want to set the brakes up high to help burnish you in faster. And you can tell it the way they feel. And after you get all that done. Better brakes, but you gotta wear so much of the brake in for the brake shoe to reach all the way around the circle. Otherwise, you're just pushing on one edge of the brake until they get burnished. So we've done all that. So now we just got the weather to deal with and a snowstorm. In the mountains with a bunch of crazy other drivers out here. So I think I'm gonna get to the first truck stop I find. And have some lunch because here it is late and I haven't even eaten lunch yet because I was trying to get everything else done. But uh, yeah, this is nerve wracking when you're on this kind of a pavement with a snow storm sticking now, the accumulating snow, and I haven't shifted in four wheel drive yet. I'm hoping I don't have to. But uh, it's 27 degrees, it's warming up a little bit. So it's really not freezing, but we are accumulating snow. Yeah, there's no truck stops in the mountains. That's the bad thing about this route we always do on I-70. There's very few places to pull over. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Unless it's snowing heavy in Denver, then I'll keep going. But if it's snow not snowing heavy in Denver, I'm going to stop and eat. At the first truck stop I see. Well, traffic's letting up. That's a good thing. Because that's another issue you got is people running in the back of you and they can't slow down. But. And that's another thing you want to practice and learn is using the brake controller. This is right where it should be on the right side. Very easy to reach. But if you get in a real slick spot and you start going sideways, don't hit your foot brake. Hit the trailer brake. Let the trailer straighten you out. You let that be your anchor. I do that uh, if it's slick in the mountains on curves. You know, I used to use the trailer brake. And that'll keep you straightened out because hitting the truck brake, you can go into a skid. truck. You could go into a skid on the trailer if you hit the brakes too hard. So you don't want to, you know, like lock them up. That would be bad. You want to just give some good braking on the trailer. Don't hit your foot feet. Just use your trailer brake gently. And that can stop you from getting crazy sideways on a snowstorm. On curvy mountain roads, So glad to see traffic lighten up because it was heavy duty coming up. Really thick. And you know, it's crazy about driving is people, especially in the snow, and they don't give a truck and a trailer or a semi and a trailer enough room. They just pull in front of you and then, you know, you hope you can stop or pull off sideways. That's why you always want to stay in the right lane if you can. But two, you know, they just don't understand some of these cars. And some of these people just moved to Colorado and there is it might be their first snowstorm. So that's kind of crazy. But uh, you know, you take your driver's license when you're 16, and if you don't have violations, you never do it again. So here I'm 62. So it's been a long time since I read the manual on the laws. I remember them. And I, you know, the CDL, you do all this stuff over again. I remember that. But so many of these people, it's been decades since they took a driving test and actually read the rules of the road so they know not to pass within 100 feet of a bridge or a railroad or an intersection. I mean, these, some of these people, they forget they even have to use blinkers. 
<laughs> they're supposed to use blinkers so I don't know but yeah it's always you gotta look out for yourself and don't get road rage I've got daughters that are just pure road rage and it doesn't help at all you can't change the other person driving all you can do is do is, is change how you're driving you gotta be defensive you gotta be careful but road rage just takes up valuable time that you need to be paying attention to the road so I don't get into that I try to be calm and not react to the crazies out there sharing the road with me big snow in Colorado we had over a foot here in Brighton and I'm sure it's a couple feet in the mountains glad you could make it but this is a 2019 Ram 2500 limited crew cab 4x4 with the standard engine which is 370 horsepower 850 torque Trailer towing on it, it's 15,200. We were actually towing about 10,300, so we were we had a lot of room in there. And the payload's 15,210 is available payload, and we were uh, we were basically you know probably 11,000 pounds. But this has also got these cool corner lights that I tried out last night. It's so cool. You turn a corner and it shows the light pointing in the direction you're turning. I love that on these. But uh, yeah, and it's right by the blinker on the outside of the mirror. These are the big twin mirrors with that power spotter mirror, which is so awesome. This truck has only got 32 gallon tank. I hope they up that because you know you need all of, all the of gallons you can get. Ford's got some with 40 gallon tanks, and you know it's getting to be the big thing when you got a big truck like this. You're pulling a big load. You need the fuel capacity. So hope that ups or otherwise you got to put an auxiliary tank on there. And this six speed automatic is a 373 rear end, which I think is just the right rear end for it. Did really well with that six speed. Um, you know, we towed it up to uh, to Central City and we were on seven and eight percent grades in the snow, in the ice. And it did really well. I had no problem pulling, you know, basically figuring payload 11,000 pounds. No problem at all. And this is such a beautiful, this is one of the most beautiful interiors of any truck out there. I mean, it's got all the stitching, it's got all the cool wood, it's got all the, you know, two tone. This is like, uh, cream colored seats and black interior. I think the gray it's a gray on the outside. I'll find that on here somewhere. But this is a, a beautiful truck, and that's what Ram is doing now. They're leading the way on interiors as well as other things. But you know, you can, I love the interiors and very comfortable seats. It's got the little pouches, little saddlebags behind the seats. And you know, it's it's uh, it's only 82,290. But, uh, you know, that's $16.95 is what it costs to ship it to you. But it's got the 20-inch wheels, which are really cool. And it's got, uh, let's see, it's a granite crystal metallic clear coat exterior paint. It's a long name for a paint. It's the indigo frost interior colors. And I like that. I like that, uh, that cream colored in the black. It looks so cool. And they own the, the little, uh, oh, the, the piping, I think it's called, that they stitch around. Is another, it's a cream color along against the black, and it looks just gorgeous. And it says that giant screen in the middle is a you know 12 inch screen, and it is fun to play with. A lot of toys in here, you feel like you're climbing to a cockpit of an aircraft, but it is cool. And it's the biggest you know screen there in the middle console of any of them. And you know, you got a sliding console where the cup holders can go forward or back, and then it gives you more room underneath the armrest, which is like a two piece armrest. You got a small compartment on top, and then a bigger one below. Or it can be really big if you move the, the cup holders out of the way. But, um, yeah, this is easier to find the transfer, the axle ratio on this, because usually there are two places. One's the optional one, one's this one. Looks like they put them in one place this time. So I used to complain about that. But, uh, of course, the normal stability control, trailer sway dampening, all the normal stuff you see on here. And you got Apple CarPlay, the Google Android Auto, nine speed. Speakers, Alpines, holy cow! And you got the wireless charging pad where you can stick your phone in there and it charges it. Of course, get old CD player. That's what I like. <laughs> I like the old CD systems. But yeah, and it's got wow, five-year Cirrus Plus service, five-year travel link. That's nice because Cirrus, like on my Ford, it was good for like six months or something, a little longer, and then I had to renew it. Well, this here you get five years. That is too cool. Ram box cargo management. I don't know if this doesn't have the Ram box. I don't know why it says it does, but anyway, 
but maybe that's just part of the cargo management. It does have you know some extra tie holds down there. LED lights, of course. LED in the bed lighting. It's sprayed in bed liner. It's got the you know those power running boards which we all like, and you can you know shut them off or turn them on or or do whatever you want with them. Great surround view camera. It's really good. You can turn it around in each corner and see what's going on with your trader, which is a big the big thing to me. Wait a minute, it's got 17 speakers. Harman Cardone premium sound thing. Wow. Yeah. Adaptive cruise control. That's one of my favorite things on these trucks. And this you barely can use it with the trailer. It's got uh, that's really good because uh, you know I, I travel in too much traffic. You put that on there, it kind of locks you, otherwise you're turning off and on and braking and all that. I love adaptive cruise control. Full speed forward collision warning. That's cool. And it's got the 360 surround, 360 with Cirrus XV. And that gives you also the threat of the surround sound camera. And the Cummins diesel, it's only a 9,100 option on here, but they don't, I don't really show you what that transmission costs because, you know, they'll charge you for an automatic even though you can only get an automatic. That's what Duramax does the same thing with GM. And the auto level air suspension. But anyway, um, the auto level air suspension, that's on the rear end of this. And on a 2500, it replaces a coil. On a 3500, it's a leaf spring plus an airbag. So this is like a true air system on the back of this. It's only by itself. And then, you know, the coils are progressive. I like the coils. But the air suspension is so cool, you can change the height to get out of it, change the height to hook up to a trailer. And then going down the road, if you have enough trailer, you can make it lower an inch going down the road, make it a little more aerodynamic. But this one's very good. They've, they've improved so much. When these first came out, they were rough riding about the first three different series they came out with I didn't like. And now the last couple they've come out with have been a lot smoother. It's actually a good riding truck. And you don't have to worry about, you know, we always measure squat with TFL truck with Andre. And you don't need to measure squat because it can't squat. It levels itself out. That is so wonderful. That's how they should be on heavy-duty trucks with trailers. You don't want to think squat in a year. You don't want squat. And this Ram doesn't have squat. I really appreciate that. And it's a smart way to do it. So, hope you enjoy the review and